hello everyone so as promised here is the series of videos with some solved examples on number properties specifically even and odd properties of integers along with my secret framework to avoid pitfalls and traps in GMAT exam related to number properties please note that there is a small prerequisite for this set of solved example videos and that prerequisite is my even and odd basics video that I had posted some time back if you do not review the previous even and odd basics video you would find that some of the concepts discussed here would be unfamiliar and hence you will not fully grasp them the link to the previous video is above and I will also try to post the link in the description of this video so you can go to the description and quickly grasp it so now let's look at the outline of this video series all right so here's the plan questions first I will give you all the questions in one shot the upfront without any answers I want you to solve each of these questions on your own first once you have solved the questions next I will give you the answers of the questions also this is for you to evaluate yourself on how you are doing in terms of these solved examples if you are getting even one of them incorrect then you need this series of videos to understand what the mistake is you you also need the secret framework to keep you from making some common mistakes that people make and even if you get all of the questions correct I guarantee you that if you read through these videos you will still learn something new especially the secret framework that I'm going to talk about after giving you the answers we will talk about the secret framework this framework has worked for hundreds of students doing GMAT prep over the last few years and the framework is the key to avoid different kinds of traps that GMAT puts in questions and then after learning about the framework we would actually get into the solutions official explanations of all of the questions you just solved and finally I will give you a bunch of resources which you could use to practice this same framework again and again over 50 plus times to get better at it the intent is after going through this video understanding the framework solving these five or six examples and practicing through these additional resources you would be very very strong at least at the even and odd properties part of the number theory before we go any further do not forget to like my video and subscribe to it there is a lot more to the math than just even and odd integers that we are going to talk about and also join my Facebook group the link is provided in the description of the video all right as promised here are the examples I will go from one example to another without giving you the solutions or the answers yet feel free to pause the video while you solve the example and try not to take more than two minutes for each of these examples so this is example one example two example three example four And example 5 the next I will give you the answers to these questions you can tally how many you've gotten right or wrong and also then we will discuss the framework on how to solve some of these questions and how to avoid typical GMAT traps and then dive into the solutions here are the answer choices you can pause here for a moment this is the secret framework that we are going to use to avoid GMAT number theory traps the name of the framework is the number house framework and over the years many many students have used this framework to avoid GMAT traps a note before we go deeper into this framework this framework may look complex but I promise you once you solve 20 to 30 problems using this framework it becomes easier initially you will have to draw things out but that's fine as you practice you will be able to do this in your mind so here's the framework when you're trying to solve a number theory problem even an odd positive negative you're often forgetting some of the values that you must take so the framework intention 
is to make sure that you do not forget any values or you are deliberate about rejecting some of the values so the framework looks like this consider it as in a house with integers on the left and non integers on the right with the zero in the middle now you will make two floors in the house positive will be the top floor and negative will be the bottom floor on the integer side divide it into even and odd and on the non integer side divide it into fractions decimals and thirds or irrational numbers now remember this is a framework with a particular intent this is not a Venn diagram this is not a mathematical hierarchy and math purists are probably cringing at this framework when I totally agree this is not a mathematically accurate diagram it's not supposed to be this is a framework with a specific intent and the intent here is to make sure that you as a test taker consider all the values when you are handling a question and as we solve more problems and I provide the solutions to some of the examples I had given you will understand it better math accuracy is not the most important concern here the important goal here is to make sure when you are solving problems you are very deliberate about which values you must and must not consider and hence I want to keep zero as separate we know zero is an even number and that's why we have given it a footnote that it is even but I have kept zero as a separate because it is also one of the biggest traps out there for number theory problems so zero gets its own area with a footnote that it is even similarly fractions decimals and thirds are all interchangeable however I want you to consider these values separately when trying to solve problems and you will see that specifically in example number two when I solve it good there is one additional thing that we need to do in the framework is think of prime numbers and there is one even prime number which is two and the rest are odd this completes our framework now let's start seeing how to apply the framework let's assume that in the question x is given to be positive which means x is greater than zero how do you apply the framework to x is greater than zero since x cannot be zero x is greater than zero so we block out the zero part of the number house like so x can also not be negative because x is greater than zero so we block out the bottom floor of the house also and we have these values that you must consider when solving the problems you have to consider even and odd and you have to consider fractions decimals and thirds okay again the intent is to be very deliberate about which values I'm blocking out or not considering for my question and which values I am considering for my question let's take another example if X is given to be an integer as part of the question then we know it's not a non integer so you block out the whole thing however at this point nothing else is given so we have to consider everything X is even X is odd prime or no prime doesn't matter we have to consider positive and negative values and also we must consider zero do not forget zero x is given to be even at this point the question gives me x is even when it says x is even as we learned in our even or not basics that even automatically means it's an integer so you can block out the right hand side since it's not an odd number you can block out the odd number column also but you have to consider x being a positive even or a negative even and also zero which is also an even number and we have been very deliberate about which numbers we are not considering and which numbers we are considering and that's the intent of this framework before we go further if you are just landing on this video and you have not watched my secret framework video on how to approach number theory problems then I think it will be beneficial for you to go back and watch the secret framework video so let's get started so in the question we are given that C and D are two integers and we are asked if 4d plus 3c 
are even. One thing you must immediately note is that this is a yes or no question. What that means is with any of the statements, I need to get a unique yes or a unique no to answer the question sufficiently. It doesn't have to be yes all the time. It could be a unique no and even then the statement will be sufficient to answer the question. Okay, so now let's apply our framework to what's given. The C and D are given to be two integers. So applying the secret number house framework, I can clearly block out the right hand side of the house and I'm left with integers portion of the house, which means that I have to consider even and odd values, positive and negative, and also zero, which is even, but we keep considering it as a separate quantity because it can lead to certain traps in GMAT. So again, what is given? What do we know about the numbers? We know that the numbers are integers. Anything else? Not really. Can we say something about the question stem? So let's look at the question stem. The question asks us is 4D plus 3C even? If D is an integer, 4D is always an even number and 3c has to be then even for even plus even to be even. If 3c were odd, then this will not be even. So basically, since this is always even, we are asked if 3c is even. And 3c will be even only when c being an integer, c is also an even. So let's revise that. 4D is always even. So D's value technically doesn't matter. I don't care if D's value is given or not. 4D plus 3C will be even when 3C is also even and 3C will be even when C is even. So when we are asked is 4D plus 3C even, we're really being asked is C even. Basically we have to figure out is C even. That's the question we are trying to answer. Let's take statement A. We are given that C plus D is odd, right? And we know that C and D are two integers. If C is odd, then D has to be even for this to be odd. If C is even, then D has to be odd for this to be odd. Now remember, the value of D doesn't matter. D could be anything. 4D is always even. So D could be even or D could be odd. So both of these things are possible. So which means C could be odd or C could also be even. From what is given in statement A, the answer to the question is C even, we are not sure. It could be odd, it could be even in some cases. So if you ask the question in this case, is C even, the answer is no, C is odd. In this case, the answer is yes, C is even. We do not get a unique yes or no. So this is not sufficient. Let's take B, C multiplied by D is odd. So again, let's draw out the chart. If C and D multiplication is odd, then there is only one possibility given C and D are integers that both have to be odd. Right? This is the only possibility. Is C even? The answer is no, C is not even. So this is sufficient to answer the question. Hence, the answer to this problem is B. And here is a typed up solution for you to follow in case you want to revisit. The difficulty level for this problem is very easy. More than 90% people get this correct. Okay, so here is example two of even and odd properties for number theory. In this question, we are asked if X is odd and then we are given two statements. This is again a yes or no question. So a, a unique yes or no to the asked question is sufficient to answer the question. Let's apply our secret framework. So the question says, is X odd? What kind of number type is X? Do we know anything? Is X an integer? Can X be a non-integer? Nothing is given. Double check. Let's just double check. Question asks, is X odd? It doesn't tell us anything about X. Doesn't indicate again, the X has to be integer. A non-integer value is also neither even nor odd, right? And you have to consider that because question is not giving you whether X is an integer or not. So the bottom line is we must consider all value. And this is why the secret framework, the number house framework helps us in getting these kind of questions correct. So if you look at the number house framework, X could be integers, even and odd, positive and negative, zero. And X could also be non-integers. It could be fractions, a decimal or a third. 
they're all interchangeable but you have to consider all of these values let's see how okay so let's take statement number a we are given that x plus y is even right let's not forget the number house framework in where we had said x could be integers and x could be non integers so we have to take both the cases so in case one let's me take x and y as integers right so if x and y are both integers and we are given that x plus y is even then what could happen x could be even and y could be even or x and y both could be odd in which case x plus y is also even so the question says is x odd with case one itself we know that in some cases x could be even the other cases x could be odd so the answer to is x odd in this particular scenario is no because x is even and in this particular scenario the answer is yes so already we know in case number one a that the statement a is insufficient but just for the sake of completion let's take case number two where x and y may not be integers maybe may not so we are given that x plus y is even can it be possible when x and y are not integers let's see 2 by 3 plus 4 by 3 equals 6 by 3 so in this case x and y are not integers so the answer to the ask question is no is x odd no but x plus y could be even we already have established that the statement is insufficient but the important thing to note that you should already be able to get from statement a is none of the values are out of your scope you have to consider the integer values and you have to consider the non integer values also so now let's look at statement b x y is given to be odd x and y are both integers let's assume then that means x has to be odd and y has to be odd the multiplication to be odd in this case we are getting a unique yes to the asked question is x odd yes but remember this is not the only case we have to consider we have also to consider when x and y are possible non-integers right so i'll give you an example 2 by 3 and y as 3 by 2 everything cancels out and you get x multiplied by y as 1 which is odd is x odd the answer is no x is not even an integer so essentially sometimes with statement b you get yes as the answer other times you get no as the answer hence statement b is also insufficient now let's combine these two statements and see what do we get remember for x and y we have to take integer values and we have to take non-integer values based on our number house framework they could be fractions decimals or third right and this is where things get interesting so we are given x plus y is even and we are also given that x multiplied by y is odd we have already seen that in case number one when we apply x and y to be integers in this particular case since x and y is odd we already get x is odd right so x equals odd we know it which means x and y both are odd so x plus y will automatically be even we know the answer to the question is yes but case 2 is where things got difficult when we considered statement number b here we are so we are given x y is odd and we are also given x plus y is even can we find some examples where this happens let's take this example let's take x and y as 4 plus root of 5 remember we have to consider thirds as our possibilities so x plus y will get me 8 so x plus y is even absolutely x multiplied by would give me 4 plus root 5 multiplied by 4 minus root 5 equals this is a plus b multiplied by a minus b that is a square minus b square right so that is 16 minus 5 equals 11 which is an odd number so x y is odd but what can you say about x is x odd 
the answer is no x is not odd in this case x is not even an integer so again we are not getting a unique answer to the ask question is x odd in some cases it is yes in other cases it is no so even when you combine the two statements this is insufficient to answer the question hence the answer to this question is e here is the typed up solution to this problem if you want to revisit it the degree of difficulty for this question is very high less than 10 percent people get it correct and the reason is because they don't apply the number house framework and they forget to use some of the thirds as possible values to solve these kind of problems okay so here is example three in this example we are given that a and b are even quantities even automatically means they are integers and we are given three choices and we have to figure out which of these is definitely even so first let's apply the secret framework which is the number house framework to what is given so we are given that a and b are even in our secret framework that means we block out the non-integer portion of the number house which is the right hand side and we also block out the odd but we have to consider even values whether it's positive or negative or zero because zero is also even in all of the given choices so let's start with choice number one we are given that a plus b are even and we need to find out if mod a plus mod b divided by 2 is definitely even we can simply do this by examples but i urge you to look at the method number two which is the generic method that will help you in one of the later choices so let's take a couple of examples here. So let's take A and B as two and four. So that means mod A plus mod B would be two plus four, six, divided by two, so would be three here. Let's take A as four and B as also four. A plus B would be eight, divided by two would be four. So is mod A plus mod B divided by two definitely even? No. So we forget about this. The generic method to solve any such question is this way. Any even number can be written as two times k, where k is an arbitrary integer because any even number is a multiple of two. So let's assume a equals 2k1 and b equals 2k2. So mod a plus mod b divided by two will be 2k1 plus 2k2 divided by 2 that equals k1 plus k2 now remember I said k can be any integer so k can be even and k could be odd so let's take and k2 is odd then k1 plus k2 is odd similarly the other way around if both of them are even then k1 plus k2 is even if both of them are odd k1 plus k2 is also even right so it totally depends on the values of k1 and k2 but the real thing is k1 plus k2 could be odd in some cases and even in some cases hence mod a plus mod b divided by 2 may be even may not be even so this choice is crossed off the list here is a typed up solution if you don't like my scribbles and if you want to revisit this particular answer choice answer choice b is where things get a little more interesting we are given that a and b are even remember when we looked at the number house framework we had said a and b are even so we have to consider the positive even numbers the negative even numbers and the zero because zero is also even we have a special place for zero in our framework so now we have to figure out if mod b to the power of mod a is even right so is it simple even to the power of even is always even right no even to the power of even is not always even that is wrong why because there is an even number called zero that's a trap 18 which is an even number to the power of zero is one hundred to the power of zero is one in fact any number whether it's a integer or a non integer to the power of zero except zero so even to the power of even can be odd and there are two traps here one if you miss considering zero as a possibility then you have a problem and if you think you don't need to consider zero because mod of a number 
is always positive, that is also incorrect. Mod of zero is zero, and zero is neither positive nor negative, okay? So basically what I'm saying is, mod b to the power of mod a is usually even for all other values of b and a, except when b is a non-zero and even number, and a is zero, in which case it will be odd. This choice is not definitely even. For your benefit, here is a typed up solution, which comes to the same conclusion. Finally, we come to our third choice, which is a square plus b square divided by two. This is definitely even. You can take some examples and get it. I have left it as an exercise because getting the examples is very, very easy on this one. But I will discuss in terms of the generic method. If you remember, we use this generic method in the first answer choice as well. Any even number can be written as two to the power of k. So now let's assume a equals two k one and b equals two k two, right? So a square will be four k one squared and b square would be four k two squared. So the question is a square plus b square by two so that means 4 k1 squared plus k2 squared divided by 2. This cancels off and we have this value as 2 k1 squared plus k2 squared. Now it doesn't matter in this particular case what is the value of k1 and k2 because they are integers and they are multiplied by 2 which makes this quantity always an even number. So we can very easily say that a square plus b square by 2 will be definitely even when a and b are even. Hence the answer to example number 3 is d, 3 only. This is a moderate level question with about 50% people getting this correct, but a lot of people, as you can see, fall for a trap. And since this is a moderate level question, if you get this wrong, penalty would be heavy. Okay, so this is example four. We are given that P multiplied by Q is even, and we are asked if P is an odd integer. There is nothing else given, and we have to figure out a unique yes or no answer from these two sentences. Start applying with the secret number house framework. Are we given something about P and Q? We are given P multiplied by Q is even, but we are not really given anything about P and Q themselves. So basically you have to consider all the integers, positive and negative and zero, and all the non-integers as well. Okay, let's start with statement A. In statement A, we are given some additional information about Q, that Q is an odd integer. So we just applied the number house framework to P and Q both, but we have to adjust for the new information that is given in Q. So for P, it remains the same. For Q, now it's given to be an odd integer. We have to block out all the non-integers, which is the right-hand side, and all the even integers, including zero, because zero is an even integer, and we have to consider only odd values of Q. P, it remains the same. We have to consider all possible values of P. So keeping Q's number house framework in mind, let's get started with solving this problem q is given to be an odd integer so we are given two things p multiplied by q is even and we are also given that q is an odd integer now if p were given to be an integer then p multiplied by q can only be even when p is even so if p were an integer p would be even and p but p could also be a non integer so we have to consider both the cases so let's assume pq equals 6 and q is 3 because q is given to be an odd. That means p has to be 2, which is an even integer, to get it to be a 6. So in this case, p is 2. Is p an odd integer? The answer is no. p is actually an even number. Now let's take pq to be a different even number, 2. And let's keep q to be 3 because q is an odd integer. From this, we find that p is actually 2 divided by 3, which is a fraction, right? Now, 
let's look at this and see what the answer to the asked question is is p an odd integer is p odd the answer is no p is not odd it is actually a fraction so what we see is that whether we consider non-integer values or integer values the answer to the asked question is always no hence this is sufficient because we are getting a unique no answer to all the possibilities so statement number b p plus q is given to be odd but nothing is given about p and q itself so our number house framework doesn't change p and q both have the same possibilities we have to consider integers including zero and non-integers as well to look at this statement so we are given p plus q is an odd number so p q is given to be an even and p plus q is given to be odd let's take an assumption that p and q are integers if p and q are integers and p q is even that means one of them is even and one of them is odd right so p q equals even means either this or this possibility p plus q being odd means either one of them is even or one of them is odd so p plus q equals odd when p and q are integers means kind of the same thing one of them is odd and the other one of them is even right now the question is is p odd in this particular case p is odd so that answers yes to the asked question yes p is odd but in this case p is even so the answer is no to the asked question so even before we go into any kind of fractions to answer this question we have our answer that sometimes we get yes to the asked question other times we get a no to the asked question which means this is insufficient so only statement a is sufficient to answer the question not b so the answer to this question is a here is the typed solution to the problem in case you want to revisit this problem again it's a statement b uh, the difficulty level of this question is moderate almost about 50 percent people get this correct all those people who are not getting it correct are basically being penalized a whole lot because they are getting a simpler question incorrect so in example 5 we are given that a b c are non-negative integers and we are asked out of the three choices which of the following are definitely even so as usual we'll start here with applying the secret framework the number house framework we are given that a b c are non-negative numbers which means we can block out the bottom story because they cannot be negative but technically zero is not blocked out yet because non-negative does not mean zero is gone they're also given to be integers so we can block out all of the right hand side of the number house which is the non-integers portion and we are left with what are the possibilities all the positive numbers including even an odd and zero those are the numbers we must consider when we are looking at these three options even all the positive odd numbers and zero and zero is an even number but it is important to think of it separately because zero can be a possible trap we have seen that before if you have viewed my basics of even and odd integers video then you know that power unknown powers do not add anything to the numbers for example if a is odd then a to the power of 5 will always be odd if a is even then a to the power of 5 will also be even in other words powers do not add anything to the nature of even or odd so i can write a to the power of i simplify it as a saying a has the same nature even or odd as a to the power of 5 applying the same logic here b to the power of 7 plus 4 raised to the power of 19 can be just written as b plus 4 because again powers of 7 and 19 are not going to change anything in terms of the even or odd nature of b and 4 can we do the same thing on 16 to the power of c here the power is unknown right c is unknown so c could be even or odd or zero if c were a non-zero even number then 16 to the power of c is even we are good there if c were an odd number then 16 to the power of c is even but if c were zero then 16 to the power of c is one which is an odd number so this number could be 
a multiple of 16, a power of 16 or one, right? It could be a power of 16 or one, which means it could be a even or odd. This was the trap. If you consider like, hey, 16 is always even, you will mark this as definitely even, but it's not. A could be odd. If B is odd, then B plus four could be odd. And we know that 16 to the power of zero is odd. If C were zero, then this will be odd, which means odd multiplied by odd multiplied by odd will be odd. So this quantity can be odd when C is zero. Hence, this is not definitely even. Let's move on to statement number two. We will apply the same concept that we applied previously. As we talked about in the previous choice, powers do not add to the nature of even and odd, especially known powers. So here, all the powers are known powers. So I can simplify this as A plus B plus C. What I'm saying is the nature of A plus B plus C, even or odd nature of A plus B plus C is same as even or odd nature of A plus B squared plus C to the power of five raised to the power of 11. Similarly, this can be written as A plus B plus C plus nine. At this point, you can start taking different values of A and B and C and come to the conclusion that this will always be even. But I will give you a simpler method. Combine A plus B plus C and call it a X. So you have this as X and this becomes X plus nine. So you have X multiplied by X plus nine. If X were even, then X plus nine would be even plus odd, odd even. If X were odd, then this will be odd plus odd even and the product will be again even. So this will always be even. Hence, choice number two is definitely even. All right, let's look at choice number three a plus b raised to the power of c and a plus b plus one raised to the power of c it's very simple when you start looking at what are the possible values of c c c is an unknown power at this point we don't know what c is could be even could be odd could be zero as soon as c is zero it doesn't matter what the value of a plus b is as long as it is non-zero you get one multiplied by one as one right so this value can definitely be odd also. So I cannot call it a must be even quantity. So only choice number two is definitely even at this point. And hence the answer to this question is C, two only. Difficulty level is pretty high. About 20% of people get it correct, which means 80% of the people fall under one trap or the other. And finally, another secret that you've been waiting for, additional practice questions. Many, many additional practice questions focused only on even and odd so that you can practice the concepts learned during my even and odd basics and the number house framework. Hope you enjoy them. The link has been provided in the description. Please do not forget to like my video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.